Hello, my name is David Tizard, Asia Society Korea's regular contributor and a professor of Korean studies, lecturing at both Seoul Women's University and Hanyang University. Today, I'll be giving you an overview of the four main candidates competing in the South Korean presidential election. Voting is set to take place on Wednesday, March 9th. The winner will then assume their role as the 13th president of the Republic of Korea in May 2022. The four candidates have already participated in two nationally televised debates. On the streets of Seoul, we are also seeing parties out in public trying to rally support for their candidates. And for the first time in Korean history after democratization, the two leading contenders have no legislative experience in the National Assembly. This short overview will seek to give you some background of the four candidates, who they are, where they are from, and what party they are running for. Politics in Korea is hard fought, but democracy here is thriving. A broadly two-party system has seen power change between the left and right with some regularity. Let's start today with the candidate for the ruling Democratic Party of Korea, DPK, Lee Jae-myung. Despite being the candidate for the ruling Democratic Party and looking to succeed the current president, Moon Jae-in, Lee Jae-myung is anything but mainstream. Born in 1964 to a family of agricultural workers, Lee was one of five sons and two daughters. His childhood years were characterized by poverty rather than privilege, so much so in fact that he worked in a factory rather than attend middle school. An industrial accident at that factory sadly left Lee with a bent arm and a class 6 disability. From there, Lee, he has sat and passed the bar exam by himself before choosing to become a human rights lawyer. In seeking this path, he was inspired by a lecture given by the former president, No Mu Hyun. Since taking his position as a human rights lawyer, Lee then sought to preserve working people's livelihoods. He had a particular focus on labor. Frustrated by the political system in which he was working, Lee Jae Myung entered politics as a way of trying to change the world around him. He ran for the position of mayor of Songnam in 2006, but he did not win that first time. Four years later, however, he was successful and he earned re-election in 2014. Lee's policies as mayor focused on welfare programs and those in economic need. Lee Jae Myung sought the Democratic nomination in 2017 and he earned some deal of support before eventually finishing third behind Moon Jae-in, the current president, and An Hee Jung. After that, he ran for and earned the seat of governor in Gyeonggi province. During the COVID-19 pandemic, still moved by that social welfare needs, he implemented one of the largest financial care packages in the country. As he runs as the Democratic Party's candidate and looks to succeed President Moon Jae-in, Lee Jae Myung has made some presidential pledges which have centered on the following issues. One of those revolves around seeking to change the single five-year presidential term and move this to a renewable four-year term. He has promised to introduce an annual universal basic income. This is something with which Lee Jae Myung is heavily associated. Lee has also earmarked massive investment into the digital transformation of Korea. In terms of foreign policy, Lee will seemingly continue the approach of the current administration. This means seeking diplomacy and engagement with North Korea. He will also continue to work with China as an important trading partner. With Japan, he will likely seek to address the historical issues of comfort women and forced labor. Let's now look at the candidate for the main conservative opposition, the People Power Party. Their candidate is Yoon Sok-yeol. In contrast to Lee Jae-myung's background, 
Yun was born in 1960 in Seoul, the child of two professors. He studied law at Seoul National University and then passed the bar exam. Yun began his career as a prosecutor in 1994. He focused on investigating and uncovering corruption, particularly among the nation's elite. In 2012, he investigated the National Intelligence Service for influence in the presidential election. In 2016, Yoon was responsible for the investigation of former President Park Geun-hye and her associate Che sun shil This looked at their abuse of state authority. It eventually led to the arrest and impeachment of the former president Park Geun-hye. After President Moon Jae-in entered office, Yoon suk yeol also contributed to the arrest of former President Lee myung Bak. In 2019, Yoon suk yeol was nominated by President Moon to the position of Prosecutor General. In that role, one of Yoon's first acts was to investigate the Justice Minister Cho Guk and his family. In 2021, after pressure from the ruling Democratic Party, Yoon resigned from his position. He first announced he would run for president as an independent candidate. He then, however, joined the Conservative Party in July 2021. Yoon's campaign pledges focus on national defense capabilities. This includes the strengthening of the Korea-America alliance, as well as the complete denuclearization of North Korea. Yoon has publicly stated that he will favor trade and a relationship with the United States over one with Beijing. He has also spoken of boosting the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense Missile System, otherwise known as THAAD. Yoon would also try to improve relations with the domestic neighbor Japan, something which he believes has deteriorated under the current President Moon administration. Domestically, Yoon has spoken about abolishing the Ministry of Gender and Family. In order to boost the economy, Yoon has said that he will abolish the 52-hour workweek and the minimum wage, both of which have been strengthened under the current President Moon administration. Let us now turn to An chol -su. Unlike the two newcomers, An is running for president for the third time. In 2017, he finished third, winning around 21% of the votes. Ahn's main focus is to build a country that boasts scientific and technological innovations, and he will achieve this through the hiring of various technocrats. This reflects Ahn's own personal background. Ahn is the only candidate with a science and technology background. His career includes that of a physician, scientist and the CEO of an antivirus software company, Arn Lab. Arn was born in 1962. Studying at Seoul National University, he earned an MD, an MS and a PhD in physiology between 1980 and 1991. After finishing his compulsory military service in the South Korean Navy as a medical officer, Ahn became heavily interested in computer programming, particularly in terms of virus protection. He created a computer protection program and then earned another master's degree from the University of Pennsylvania in 1997. In 2011, Ahn ran for the position of mayor of Seoul. He took an independent position, voicing his frustrations with the two main parties. He eventually lent his support for the winner, Park Won Soon. In 2012, he ran for president before again giving his support to the Democratic Party candidate, which at that time was Moon Jae-in. Today, in 2022, Ahn is the candidate for the minor centrist opposition People's Party. He has promised flexible rules and financial assistance for businesses suffering during the COVID-19 pandemic. His campaign has promoted his image as an alternative candidate free from scandal. Finally, we have the candidate for the minor progressive justice party, Shim Sang-jung. She positions herself as the candidate 
capable of putting a stop to the 34-year history of two-party politics that has dominated South Korea. Shim was born in 1959 and graduated with a degree in education from Seoul National University. Following her graduation, however, she spent her time working as a labour activist. There she would mobilise factory workers, helping them seek better wages and working conditions. Shim entered politics in 2012, and she is a four-term lawmaker and an influential figure in the South Korean progressive domestic faction. Shim stands for workers, women, sexual minorities, and other vulnerable groups in society. This includes her desire to enact an anti-discrimination law in South Korea. During the 2017 presidential debate, Shim was the only candidate to speak openly in support of LGBT rights. She has also talked of a four-day work week and increased labour rights. In 2017, Shim finished the presidential election in fifth place. She won approximately 2 million votes, which was about 6% of the final voting. Today, South Korea stands proud as a democracy in Northeast Asia. It has a vibrant political scene, with different parties promoting different policies, both in terms of domestic policy and also in terms of foreign international relations. Nobody quite knows who the next president will be, but Asia Society Korea will make sure to keep you informed whatever happens. I've been David Tizard, and thank you for watching.